Hi, this is Sieg Schmalz, Applications Engineer at Microchip Technology. In this video, we discuss period jitter, which is also known as long-term jitter. We'll see shortly why it makes sense for us to use these names for this type of jitter. Period jitter is the deviation in size of one clock period from its long-term average period. This value is measured repeatedly for a large number of clock cycles, or periods, where 10,000 or more cycles is a pretty common choice. These 10,000 values yield a time domain statistical distribution from which we can determine values such as peak-to-peak -peak or RMS period jitter, which are values you may find specified in a data sheet. Now, let's do a quick review of tie jitter versus cycle-to-cycle -cycle jitter and period jitter by asking ourselves this question. Which type of jitter can reveal a change in the average clock frequency? Tie jitter? Yes, tie jitter can reveal a change in the average clock frequency because it involves real clock edges being compared versus the edges of an ideal clock. And an ideal clock, by definition, has constant, unchanging frequency and phase. Okay, so what about cycle-to-cycle -cycle jitter? No, cycle-to-cycle -cycle jitter cannot reveal a change in the average frequency of a clock because cycle-to-cycle -cycle jitter applies only to adjacent neighboring clock periods. And as we demonstrated in the previous video, video number 16 in this series, the clock frequency can drift, or it could even double, while the cycle-to-cycle -cycle jitter remains unchanged. And lastly, how about period jitter? Recall that period jitter is also called long-term jitter, and there is good reason for this. Period jitter is measured over tens of thousands of periods, not just two adjacent periods, as is the case with cycle-to-cycle -cycle jitter. Measuring this many periods would certainly reveal a drift or a jump in the clock frequency.